Okay, good morning everybody and Hazak Baruch, thank you for joining us on this beautiful Thursday morning as we are here preparing for Perashat Ki Tetze. Ki Tetze la Milchama al Oyevecha. Our Perasha begins with the Milchama, the Jewish people, if the Torah says if you go out to war, very interesting case, um, that you go out to battle and you're fighting the enemy and then Hashem gives the enemy into your hand. And you see over there a very pretty lady. You know, the enemy used to set up women to try to distract the men at battle. Okay? But our Ba'alim Musar point out something very interesting. Our ethicists, they point out that the words Kitetzele Milhama, of course, are understood on a simple level. The Pshat, that's the Milhama that we go out to um, every single, you know, when we had battles with the Jewish people. But every one of us, Rabotai, Every single one of us is fighting a daily battle. All of us are fighting. We are all here to fight. You should know that. We're all fighting who? Who are we fighting? We are fighting the Oyev, the enemy. That is, of course, the Yetzer Hara. We have a lifelong battle with our Yetzer Hara, and it never ends. We go from the day we are born till the day we die. Even the last second on a deathbed. A person is never free from the temptation of the Yetzer Hara. That's why so much of us, we love when we see fighting. Right? You, ever, you see two people fighting, you get excited. Oh, what, what happened? What happened? Right? We get excited when we see uh, conflict. Why? Because created in us, we were given the tools that we need to fight. Problem is that we're not fighting the right people. We're not fighting the right places. Instead of fighting the Yetzir Hara and focusing our attention there, we focus our attention to fighting the wrong people. We fight with our wives. We fight with our friends. We fight with our husbands, with our family. We fight with neighbors. We fight with employees. We fight with other Jews. We fight with other types of people from the synagogue. We're fighting, but we're fighting the wrong battles. And the Yetzir Hara is laughing and laughing because he knows that not only are we not fighting the right, imagine, imagine a guy gets you to fight in a war, your own team, your own army. What a foolish guy. He's turning around, he's shooting his own people. The enemy is that way. And our rabbis tell us, Le'olam Yargiz Adam. A person must always. Battle. Yetzer Hatov al Yetzer Hara. We must always use our Yetzer Hatov to overcome our Yetzer Hara. Always. Always meaning from the, from the day till the day we die. There's never a time that a person could just sit back and relax. It's never over. This is a, final, a battle that we fight. Now the battle may move always to different battlefronts. Maybe to different places, different types, different things that we're fighting. <clears throat> When we were kids, we maybe struggled with one type of test. When we get older, we fight with a different type of test. Right? Little kids, they're not fighting over, um, you know, inches on property and real estate. And I'm going to buy that house. And no, I should buy it. I'm the neighbor. I have first dibs. They're not fighting, right? Little kids about stuff like that. They're fighting about other things. As we get older and older, the Yetzirah comes with different uniform. We have to always be prepared. Our rabbis tell us, a mashal, imagine a person finds out that their partner is stealing from them. You find out that the partner took more than he should from the funds. Now, if you're a foolish person, if you are ignorant, then you'll say, you know, what am I going to say anything for? What he took, he took. It's done. It's lost. I'm not going to get it back. I'm going to... Not worry about the past. I'm going to worry about the future. Move forward. Is that a smart thing to say or not a smart thing to say? Of course, this is a very foolish thing to say because if we don't say anything, if you just worry about the forward, well, he's going to do it again. Right? Unless we say something, hey, I, I saw what you did, and we confront the person. Or let's say the other way around. Let's say the partner is giving you more than your share. He writes you a bigger check than you really deserve. Now, you may be very excited, right? But 
when you when you pay attention to the books, you realize that he also gave himself not only a bigger portion also, but an even bigger portion than he gave you. If you're, again, a foolish person, will stay quiet. Ah, I'm very happy. I'm getting what I need. But if you look at the bigger picture, he's taking even more than that. He's taking double. He's taking an even bigger advantage. And therefore, our rabbis say, with the Yitzhahara, a person has to always... We have to always introspect. How was my day yesterday? Yesterday, how was... How am I berachot? Did I say berachot? Did I have kavana when I said my blessings? How was my prayer? Did I actually feel like I talked to Hashem? Did I connect to God in tefillah? person that is wise, a foolish person, right, will say, listen, Rabbi, yesterday was yesterday. I don't want to think about it. I just, let's, let's worry about today. Let's move forward. That's a very foolish mistake. Because if we don't sit down and actually start thinking about our mistakes from yesterday, if we don't talk to the partner that stole from us yesterday, he's going to keep doing it tomorrow. We're going to keep falling for the same tricks. So it's very important to sometimes sit. Yes, we don't like to look backwards. We like to look forwards. And there's a lot of truth to that. But look forwards after thinking about yesterday, learning from the mistakes of yesterday. We have to address what happened and then forget about it and look forward. Or, right, a person, maybe sometimes the Yetzir Hara could push you to do a mitzvah. And he'll give you more than you deserve. He'll give you a bigger share than what should be coming to you. And you'll find, wow, look at me. I went to shul every day. I'm learning beautifully. And that's an amazing thing. We should be very proud of those things. But says the Chafetz Chaim, sometimes that could actually be the Yetzir Hara. That could be the partner who's giving you more because he's also smiling because he's taking more. So what does that look like? What does that mean? So the Chafetz Ayin gives a mashal. Now the mashal doesn't pertain, I think, to anyone in this chat, chat right now. But I think it's a very beautiful lesson. Imagine for a second, you were in yeshiva. The Chafetz Chaim used to give a mashal. It was one of his favorite mashals. Mashal is a parable. This was one of his favorites. He brings... Excuse me, this was um, from the, uh, not from the Chafetz Sain, this was from Ruchaim Shmulevitz, the Mashkiach of the Mir. This was one of his favorite mashals. The Midrash says that um, there's these very clever dogs in the Shuk Shel Romi. Shuk Shel Romi Hayu Kelavim Armumimim. There were very clever dogs in the marketplaces of Rome okay what does a clever dog look like what makes these dogs in Rome so clever well it says the Midrash the Caliph would lie down crouch down make believe he's going to sleep by the by the by the bakery he's right outside the bakery he puts his head down he closes his eyes you know he's peeking he's making believe he, he's look you know he's sleeping he's not really looking right Mesim atzmoke yashen. But really, what does the dog want? The dog just wants a loaf of bread, right? He wants a loaf of bread. Now, you go to the baker and you say, Mr. Baker, will you let this dog have a loaf of bread? The baker says, what? Take my hard-earned work loaf? No way. I work very hard for that. I woke up at 4 a.m. to bake that bread. The dog was still sleeping at 4 a.m. I'm not going to let him take my bread from me. Okay. Says Rav Chaim Shmulevitz, what happens? These dogs, they're very clever. What do they do? They run into the bakery when he's not looking. And they flip over the entire basket. And they start running away with it. All the bread. 18, 20 loaves. The whole morning's work. And they start running and running till... He sees the baker is catching up. He drops all of the bread and he runs away with just one. Now the baker quickly 
gets to the bread, he puts them back in the basket. I don't know if he tells anyone that they fell on the floor. He probably doesn't say anything. Right? Five second rule. <laughs> right? Remember the five second rule when we were kids? And, and that number always went up depending on how long it was on the floor. Oh, no, it's a ten, I heard 10 second rule. Right? Okay. So the dog, the dog would um, take the loaf of bread. The baker puts all the breads back in the basket. He counts. Oh, Baruch Hashem. 17. I showed that dog. No one, no one takes my dogs from me. Ha ha ha. Right? Now, says Rav Chaim Shmulevitz, why, what makes this dog so clever? You think about it, not so clever at all. He made a whole commotion, whole tumult, and he only got one bread. Other dogs, they're much smarter. No? The other dogs, they go, they take a bread, and they run away. What's, what makes this dog more clever than the other dogs? And says the Midrash, because at the end of the day, all the dog wants is one. All he wants is one. But take a look at how the baker feels at the end of the encounter with the dog. A regular dog, the dog runs in, takes a loaf and runs out. The baker sees it and he's like, shoot! I gotta be where tomorrow. He hires a security guard. He puts a lock on the door. Make sure no dogs come in. He puts a sign, no dogs allowed. I don't know if that works. But he makes sure not to allow any dogs. But says Rav Chaim Shmulev, it's the Roman dogs that are much smarter. You see, because how does the baker feel at the end of his encounter with the Roman dog? The baker walks away, flexing, patting himself on the back. Good for me. You see, nobody touches my bread. And he doesn't even pay attention. You idiot! You lost a piece of bread! You lost one! But he doesn't feel like that. He walks away feeling great about himself. He feels like he won. And that's the genius of the Roman dogs. He gets the, he gets the bread that he wants while getting the, the baker to feel like he won. That's, by the way, very good advice in general. We all want things in life. A very clever person will learn to get what they want while making the other person feel like they got what they wanted. But Rav Chaim Shmulevitz used to use this as a very big um, springboard to talk to the boys about the Yetzir Hara. The Yetzir Hara is like a Roman dog. You see, a Roman dog is much different than a regular dog. Yetzir Hara doesn't come and take from you time and take from you Averot to make you do sins. He's much smarter than that because he knows that if he just makes you keep losing, you're going to wake up and say, hey, what's going on over here? I'm losing like, like, like a loser to the Yetzir Hara. How in the world am I losing so much? So the Yetzahara, he lets you win sometimes. He wants you to win because if you win a little bit, then you're not going to pay attention to me. It's like the partner who gives you also a bigger cut than you deserve. Ah, okay, I made money. I made extra. I'm happy. You don't even pay attention that he took even more than that. The dogs of Rome are very smart and the Yetzirah is a very clever person. And he comes to us and he lets us win. So the example that he gives, again, something that we're not all going to relate to. But sometimes he'll go to a boy in yeshiva and it's Thursday night and he'll say, listen, do a mishmar tonight. I know Seder ends at 10 o'clock. You're supposed to stop learning at 10. Go to 1, go to 2 in the morning. Learn. Push yourself and you go in and you're fighting and you're tired but you're grinding and you learn till 2 a.m. and you walk out of the learning you feel great. Yetzahara just gave you a whole basket of bread but you know what happened at the same time you wake up the next morning and you're very tired you walk in late to shul you're praying you not don't have any concentration because you're very tired from the learning that you did when you're learning in the morning with your first Seder Havruta from 9 to 1 a.m. from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m., the first part of, first shift of learning, you're, you're very tired. And again, please forgive me, Havruta, because of course I was up till 3 a.m. last night learning. And then the second Seder from uh, whatever time that is, 3 to 6, 7 p.m., 
you're very tired and again you're not able to really learn so well but of course your Chavuta has to understand because after all wasn't I learning till 3 a.m.? Sometimes a person has to calculate. Sometimes Yetzirah pushes us to do a mitzvah. A mitzvah, mind you. Not an avera. And he's giving us so many extra loaves of bread because he's taking from the back end without us even noticing. That's something that we have to pay attention to a lot. To be very careful. Sometimes Yetzirah will come to you and tell you, listen, you know, you want to go to Shi'ur. How come your wife didn't have dinner ready on time? You're trying to learn Torah. What's, what's the matter with her? Doesn't she appreciate Torah? <laughs> Doesn't she appreciate you have minyan? You're supposed to pray with a minyan. You're going to shul. You're becoming religious. Why is she not having the things that you need on time? Yitzhak gives us a whole basket of bread, of Torah and learning to get us to fight with our wives, to get us to fight with our husbands because you know what? I'm, I need to go to a class in the middle of the day and I want to learn. And so maybe, my, maybe the wife's going to go to the shiur at the expense of other important things that she's supposed to do. Instead of being there for her children when they need her, instead of doing other things for the family, Yetzirah will come and say to a lady, go and pray, Mincha, something that maybe she doesn't have to do. And now she's behind on many things that she's supposed to do, and then it's going to cause her children to not really feel so connected, and she's going to have... So always, Yetzirah, he doesn't just take a loaf of bread. He takes a loaf of bread, but he gives us 19. And it's human nature to focus on the 19. That's what we gained. But remember, he took from you one. And we should feel good about the 19. But if we're going to not even pay attention to the one, then the Yetzir Hara won. And therefore, we have to be very careful. That's, that's the battle that we are fighting. Look how clever the Yetzir Hara is. Le'olam yargiz adam. We have to always pay attention. Always, because he's, he's planning. Right now, as we're learning, he's very upset because right now we're winning. We're learning, Baruch Hashem. Unless maybe this is coming at the expense of something that else he's supposed to do, then I'm not speaking for you. But I'm assuming right now we're all learning at the right time. Baruch Hashem. And the Yetzirah is sitting there and he's, he's planning away. He's planning, okay, fine, he lost this battle. How am I going to get him next time? How am I going to get him right after? And therefore we have to always be planning equally so. We have to always be on the balls of our feet. We can never let our guard down for a second. Anyone that, right? Tennis, tennis fans. You could be up 5-0, five, 5 love, 40 love. One, one second you take your mind off the game, you open the door, you let him back in. You have to always be watching because it begins with one point. 5-0 becomes 5-1. Then he's serving. 5-2, he breaks you again. 5-3. He's already on a momentum, momentum shift, swings the other way, and now he breaks you again. He's serving, forget about it. Very quickly, very quickly. You, you, need, a, you need a lot of, it's a, a lot of mind game. By the way, sometimes losing that, that first game, 5-1, to be able to catch yourself and say, okay, fine, I lost one, but it doesn't matter. I got to get back into it. Okay? You know, the Pasuk tells us in this week's Perasha that you're not allowed to... You, you ready for this one? Very interesting one. Okay? I want to, I want to read to you the, the exact wording. If I could find it. The Torah tells us, okay, I can't find it, I'm sorry, and I don't want to waste too much time. The Torah tells us that you're not allowed to bring as a korban etnan zona. Okay, what does that mean? Well, a zona, we know what that is. That's a prostitute, right? The Torah says you're not allowed to bring a, the, the wages that, a, that you gave a prostitute 
right? Back then, they would pay sometimes with sheep. Today, I don't know if a guy ever tried that, you know, paying a prostitute with sheep. I don't know really if that works. But back then, they used to pay with animals. The Torah says, oh, right here, chapter 23, Pasuk 19. Lotavi etnan zona. You shall not bring the fee of a prostitute. Umhir kelev. Or the pay of a dog. Bet Hashem lechol Let's say you have to bring a sheep as a korban. Okay? So you, you know what? The lady says, you know, I have over here, or, her, or whatever. Someone says, I have over here, the sheep that they gave to the prostitute. I'm going to take the sheep. I'm going to pay my wages. I'm going to go bring this sheep as my korban that I owe to the Ved HaMikdash. The Torah says, that's not allowed. Lot Avi, you're not allowed to bring that. Now, if I were to ask you, why? Why can't I use that sheep? I think very simply, we would all say, Rabbi, come on. Aib, <laughs> right? Aib, Arabic, it means uh, it's not, not a proper. It's not proper. You're going to bring something from the prostitute, from the brothel, to Hashem? Come on, right? And that is how many commentaries explain. Because look at where it came from. It's not nice to bring something that came from that and to use that for Hashem. You're going to bring that as a korban? Not nice, right? However, Ramban Nachmanides, he says it's the exact opposite. It's not a problem because of where it came from. It's a problem because of where it's going. Meaning, meaning, says the Rambam, Ramban, sorry, Nachmanides. Imagine this lady. Imagine a person has that sheep. They used a very, they did a very bad thing with it. They used it to pay a prostitute. But you know what now? A person will take that sheep and bring it as a korban. And that is sometimes a person's way of koshering the sin that he did. You know what, Hashem? I'm sorry. I did a very bad sin. I'm going to now give it to the Ben HaMikdash. I'm going to give this sheep to the Ben HaMikdash. Says the Ramban, don't think that you can do that and now you're clean. You need Teshuvah. You can't bribe Hashem. You can't do a wrong thing and then do a good thing and think you're even. You can't steal from people, but it's okay. I'm going to give tzedakah. Man once came to Rav Schwab and he handed him a very nice check. And Rav Schwab says, I'm confused. Didn't you, didn't you file for chapter 11? Didn't you go bankrupt? And the guy says to him, Rabbi, yes, I did. And I was able to get three cents on the dollar and I was able to protect myself and Baruch Hashem, I have all this money that I was saved from losing and now I want to thank Hashem and I want to give Hashem a nice donation. So here you go, Rabbi, here's the check. And Rav Schwab looked at the man and he said to the guy, take your charity, take your tzedakah and go pay back all your creditors. Go pay back the other people that you really owe your money to. Don't try to don't try to steal from people and then give it tzedakah and think you're off the hook. What a strong musar. But this is, sometimes we make this mistake. We think we could bribe Hashem. I learn at night and then I could go do whatever I want later in a club. I will pray and then I could kind of, you know, not keep kashrut so well, but, but, I, but, I, but I pray today. You can't bribe Hashem. Don't bring your etnan zona. Don't bring a sheep that you use to do an avera, prostitution. Don't bring that sheep and now, all right, Hashem, I'm going to bring a korban. You can't do a mitzvah to wipe away an avera. There's only one way to wipe away an avera, and that is with teshuvah. To repent, to have remorse on what we did, to never, to never do it again. That's how we get rid of our sins. But the Yetzirah, he's very clever. And he'll give us 19. Go pray. Go do mitzvot. Go, go learn. Don't pay attention to all your sins. So again, a lot more to talk about over here. Uh, but I think this is food for thought. Um, as we are all fighting our own battles, every one of us. Right? We have to remember who the real enemy is. 
Who's the real enemy? The real enemy is the Yetzer Hara. Every one of us has one. And that's why we have to invest all of our time, not into fighting your beautiful spouse or your beautiful children or your beautiful friends or partners or Jews, right? So often we focus how much of our Shabbat table is spent on our meal is spent. Oh, I don't understand. How could these Jews? And what about that type and that hat and this hat and this type of color Jew and that type of uh, that color Jew? We spend all of our energy fighting other Jews. Who's the real enemy? We should be as excited. Halevai. <laughs> we should be as passionate about fighting the Yetzir Hara. Remember, remembering that he's the one that we're going out to battle. And if we do ours, the Pasuk promises, Ki If you do what you need to do to make sure to go out to battle against your Oyev, your enemy, the Yetzir Hara, Untano Adonai Elohecha Beyadecha. Then Hashem will deliver him into your power. Okay, we'll stop over here. We should always okay to fight and to conquer our Yetzirah. We'll stop over here. Have a wonderful day. We'll see you all tomorrow. Bye-bye.